Okay, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, I think uh, we should get started at this time. I'm Janusz Farkas, uh, uh, co-chair of the working group uh, together with uh, Lou Berger. And uh, Ethan Grossman uh, is our secretary. He is uh, also on this call. You can find the material at the usual place. Uh, the link is shown uh, on, uh, on this uh, slide and uh, all the working group information on the working group page. Uh, next slide, please. So it is an IETF meeting. It is an interim meeting of the DevNet working group. Uh, participation is governed by the IETF Note 12. Uh, if you are not familiar with it, please uh, check. Uh, you see the link in the, in the bottom of the page and uh, you can find it. Uh, in multiple places. I would like uh, to note that by participating, you acknowledge that uh, uh, you participate in a meeting that becomes uh, part of the permanent uh, record. Okay, let's uh, go to the next slide, please. Uh, just uh, some administrative information. Uh, Lou has already uh, typed it into the chat window. So we use uh, the WebEx uh, chat uh, window for uh, uh, only for questions. So if uh, you have questions uh, to the presentation or you want to make a web comment, please add yourself to the queue at the microphone in the WebEx chat window with, with the plus Q uh, sign, or uh, and then <clears throat> we will ask you to to talk. And uh, you can uh, leave the queue if uh, you decide so with a minus uh, Q sign. For uh, discussion chat, like uh, generic uh, chat, uh, we use Jabber. So please, uh, please uh, uh, join the Jabber chat. Uh, it's only uh, Lou and myself uh, so far on that. Uh, we use uh, Etherpad for minute taking. As usual, uh, you can see the link uh, here on the screen, and the ADC information is available for at the meeting uh, material. And uh, we have the, the virtual blue sheet uh, or the blue sheet actually at the end uh, of uh, the Etherpad. So please add uh, yourself, uh, fill in uh, uh, the name and both both the name and the affiliation with full full name and affiliation. Um, also, please join the minute taking in Etherpad. So that's uh, what uh, becomes the basis of our uh, official minutes. The uh, agenda and the slides are available uh, at the page of uh, this uh, session, this interim session. And um, yes, I already mentioned the Jabber, you can find it. So, uh, so please join us at Etherpad and in Jabber. Uh, next slide, please. So our agenda for today, we have uh, this uh, introduction and uh, status update, uh, uh, working group status update and status updates on our drafts. And after that, as uh, we announced before, the main topic uh, for today is uh, the configuration Yang model and uh, the authors will uh, give a presentation on it, uh, uh, give us a, a status update and, and dive into the technical details. Next slide, please. Just a, a reminder about uh, uh, working remote in, in this uh, era. Uh, as always, and in, 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 in general as well, uh, the mailing list is the main forum for the work, so, so please do use the mailing list. Uh, the, the working group consensus is uh, determined uh, based on the mailing list. Uh, but actually, it may be, uh, become more important, uh, these uh, remote days, uh, working group decision and so on is, is uh, driven by discussion on uh, the mailing list, to resolve open issues, uh, comment uh, documents and so on. So, so please, uh, participate in the mailing list. Uh, we have uh, uh, virtual meetings, that's the way uh, for now, and uh, 
this is the second virtual interim uh, this year. Uh, we can schedule interims as, as needed for the progress. Like um, this one is kind of dedicated for, for Yang. Uh, we also uh, will have a meeting at the uh, upcoming IETF 109. And it's also uh, very important uh, that um, we can have working meetings a bit more informal, like not uh, uh, minutes and so on. Uh, and uh, if uh, so, we, we, you may have noticed that we are having uh, those uh, type of meetings. For example, for the progressing the Yang, most recently we have weekly uh, electronic meetings, and. Uh, the working group webex is available for that so please just uh, uh, let us know uh, if you would see benefit uh, and you would think it useful to schedule uh, this type of informal working uh, meetings for for a topic so please don't not hesitate to contact us uh, it seems it uh, we will stay this virtual world for, for now, and uh, and we think that uh, these type of uh, virtual meetings may facilitate make, making progress. So, I suggest to to leverage this uh, opportunity. Next slide, please. Just a reminder uh, about the IPR disclosure process. Uh, we follow the process. Uh, uh, of IETF and we do call for IPR uh, at adoption and working group plus call and IETF plus call. So it's important to, to disclose IPR if you are aware of uh, to uh, working group material. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, the status update about our drafts. So we have already three RFCs published, and we have a couple of uh, drafts with the IESG. The uh, base data plane drafts, uh, the five uh, data plane drafts are, are progressing uh, well. The first two one, the data plane framework and the, the IP uh, draft are with the, the, uh, with the ITF editor in, in the RFC editor queue. And, uh, uh, the MPLS one and the IP over MPLS uh, has recently passed ISG approval. So it's getting uh, towards the RFC editor queue. Uh, we, are, we are done with them. And uh, also the MPLS over VPIP, we have uh, uh, submitted the publication request. And actually, uh, there is a quite recent version uploaded available that addresses uh, all the comments uh, we have uh, received so far. So uh, uh, as I understand, uh, it's uh, to be scheduled for a telechat and for getting towards ISG approval. Uh, the uh, security draft has a similar status. Uh, it has been updated and all the comments we have received have been addressed. And it's uh, to be uh, scheduled for a telechat for ISG approval. And the flow information model is also in, in similar status. Uh, it is an update is uh, being prepared, actually half ready, addressing all the comments uh, uh, we got uh, to be able to move on uh, towards the ISG approval. And next slide, please. And uh, this is uh, the the rest of our working group uh, drafts, uh, we have uh, the TSN-related data plane drafts that have uh, uh, that are post the working group uh, last call. Uh, just got uh, comments on them uh, uh, from Lou on the list, and the next step is to address uh, the comments and uh, prepare uh, new revisions. As I mentioned uh, before. The main uh, topic uh, for today is the Yang uh, draft. We will hear that more in detail. And we have uh, three more working group drafts that are not on the agenda uh, for today. We have the uh, two OEM drafts. The IPOM draft have, has been recently adopted by the working group. And uh, we also have the uh, bounded uh, 
latency draft. These are uh, being updated. Uh, I, we got uh, some information from the authors and uh, new revisions, uh, for example, from the bounded latency is being prepared uh, to be submitted for IETF 109. Uh, next slide, please. This brings to IETF 109, which will be our next meeting. So we have uh, requested a session that uh, for the Red Networking Group at IETF 109. Uh, please update your drafts. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, some updates are ongoing. That's really, really great. Uh, thank you for that. And uh, if you would like to give a presentation at uh, the session uh, in the, the .NET Working Group, please email us, the chairs at the .NET hyphen chairs ITF org. Um, we will uh, send announcement on formal slot requests after uh, the session is scheduled. I mean, we already know when we are uh, during the meeting week. Uh, the time uh, zone for the meeting week will be the Bangkok time zone, as we were supposed to meet in Bangkok. Uh, but we don't know exactly uh, what time and day uh, that net will be meeting, but there will be a that net meeting. And that was the introductory part. Any questions or the thoughts? Okay. Uh, uh, only, uh, only just that, um, please go to the blue sheet. I just put the uh, link in the list and um, check that I've put in your name properly. And if you could add your affiliation, that would be great. Yes, yes, please, uh, please uh, do so. So the next one is the, the, the Yang. So please uh, take it over. Yeah, I'm not sure who's uh, presenting. Also, whoever is presenting, please feel free uh, to take the screen if you'd like, or I can present, or I can turn for you. Either way. Um, I'll, hi, it's Don here. <clears throat> I'll I'll start out uh, just uh, introduce myself, and uh, I'll let the other editors speak first, and then I I think I'm going to drive most of the presentation. But if the other editors want to speak up. Uh, that's fine by me too. Um, so I'm Don Fedek uh, with LabN.net. I've been working on this for the last uh, year, I guess. Uh, mainly, the the the, uh, the the purpose of of the, that I came in was to try and align the the flow model document, and so we've done that. And the last, I'll I'll, I'll give an update of, of what we've been doing, but um, I'll, I'll let the other authors introduce themselves um, and then we can go on to the material. Hi, this is Xiuxun. Thank you, Janos. Thank you, Dan, for your introduction. And uh, uh, the Yang model has been up to, uh, has been uh, worked uh, among the orders for about one year, and we have a um, uh, discussion together every week. And it is great to see that there is great progress in this work. And I think we, uh, this time, we will up update a lot of uh, new things uh, during the, um, I think, the past uh, two or three months, what we have done, uh, mainly about aggregation and some other. Uh, update. I think Don will give uh, more details. And thank you for other authors to participate in this work, especially uh, Yuan Chao and Don. Their work has uh, uh, give a lot of more ideas to the Dan and Yang model. And also thank you, Richard, to um, join our discussion. Okay. I I think. That's uh, a good introduction of the, the, the authors. Um, so if, if anybody else wants to speak up, they could just use the queue, uh, but we'll, we'll start moving on. So if you could move to the next slide, Lou. So the, the status is uh, we merged the model. So when we started out, I came in with a slightly different model that I based purely on the flow. Um, uh, the, the flow model and 
I, uh, we, we, we spent several meetings merging that together. Um, we've gone through um, terminology, but it, it might not all be there yet. We've still got a little bit of terminology to clean up. Um, but gen generally, as we merged, we tried to make sure it made sense. Um, we've, we've gone back to the data plane dra drafts a few times to make sure that we're matching the data plane drafts. Um, and uh, we do need to include the reference pointers to the various data plane drafts. So we've been working with the model, we've been working with the drafts, but we haven't included the reference pointers in there. Uh, so as we go forward, that's one, one piece that we have to do. Next slide, please. So a little bit of the history uh, of the, uh, the, the things here. I'm just going to concentrate on the last uh, two versions. Uh, so we merged the models um, and, and terminology alignment. And then we've been adding aggregation and the instance models. Uh, by the instance models, we've been using YangLint to, uh, to validate the models because what I, I've personally found uh, that brings clarity to the model for me because uh, when you use the instance data on the model, uh, you only see the configuration for the particular scenario that you're looking at. So it's a little bit easier to see uh, you know, the tree for the forest that's in the, the, yang, the yang tree. So we've got a fairly large tree, and when you do the instance model, you can focus in on w what you're doing. Um, so I think that's brought a lot of alignment. The other things that we've done in, in the last ones is we've made sure that everything is, is going cleaner. So yanglet is another hurdle to, to make the, the model cleaner. Um, and also uh, the ID nits as we, as we put everything into the draft, the, the draft is getting cleaner and uh, it should start picking up. I don't. I don't know if it was. It, it, I, I didn't check to see if it actually picked up the model from the draft. But we had some issues before that the model wasn't being picked up. So hopefully that's all cleaned up. Next chart. So this is just a, a recap diagram. We've seen this before. Um, this is the uh, a, a relationship to the um, the, the Yang model um, and the, the various drafts that are out there. So on the left side, we've got the, the various data formats that can come into applications, whether it be IP, MPLS, or Ethernet data. And then we've got the various uh, um, uh, components, I'd say, of the, of the, the path, the application, the service sublayer, and the forwarding sublayer that are all detailed in the various drafts there. And we're, we're, not, we're not doing everything yet. Uh, we're trying to stick to the drafts that are out there, so, but we're building a, an infrastructure that hopefully this could be added to. And the, the MPLS case in the middle is one of the ones that we focused on a lot because that's a simpler model to, to IP coming in and MPLS uh, is one of the simpler ones that we've been doing. Okay, next chart. This is just a, a recap model. We've gone through this before, so it, it's just showing um, things that have come from the the, the flow that net flow document and flow information model and so the application and the um, the service sublayer and the various characteristics that are are in there um, the, the various attributes so we, we've used these attributes and we work these into the model we can move on so one of the things that we had in the model uh, that came from the flow information model was uh, this uh, traffic uh, requirements and traffic specification. And we had that sprinkled at various places throughout the model because you, you, could, you could have that information at the, either at the application, the service sublayer, or even the forwarding sublayer. 
And what we did in this one as we were working through aggregation was we pulled that out as a profile and just referred to it in the model. So you, now it can be, it's still optional at, at several layers. It, it typically would be specified at the service sub-layer, but it can be specified at all layers. And you would basically have a profile that you could use and, and define it. And then you could actually have one or more services or applications sharing the profile. So if it's a one-to-one -one service relationship, you could share the same profile or you could have another one. So we thought that was a, an improvement on the model. Next chart, please. So um, this is still a, a, an area of discussion. Um, when we added aggregation, um, the, the goal was not to, not to change the one-to-one -to -one mapping too much, because uh, we had a, a working model, and it was how do we add this in? I had pulled this one out uh, for a service aggregation group as a separate piece in the tree, and um, but I, I didn't want to replicate everything that was at the service sublayer. So it's a, it's a service sublayer aggregation model. In particular, this one is 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 showing how the aggregation label for MPLS could be used and how it relates back to the services. But there's this, in the model today, there's actually two, two versions of this. There's one that uh, Young Chal had provided that's in the service sublayer, and this one is out of the su service sublayer. So if, um, and I, I provided two instance data to try to illustrate the differences in those. I don't know whether there's a big difference because um, I think they they both got all the same elements. It's it's really a matter of uh, seeing if anybody can pick up any technical reason that we should go one way or the other. We'll have to choose one, though. Next chart, please. So this is um, a, a bit of a, a, a terminology uh, type um, diagram of the uh, pieces of the tree. So we've taken a represented piece of the tree. You can go and look at the, the full model, but we've tried to show how, um, how the various pieces fit together. So with aggregation, and, and, the, and the color coding is showing what we've added in for some of the aggregation pieces. Now there's this, this, this also illustrates the overlap that's there. So we have the, um, the service type, if it's grouped or non-grouped. Um, if it's non-grouped, it's, it's the old model, the one-to-one -one model. If it was grouped, then it would have an aggregation group reference to the previous chart we saw. And then the other one is down below, um, without the grouping model, um, we've got an aggregated service in the service sublayer and the aggregated forwarding piece. The one piece that we, we do have uh, with these two models, if you compare a aggregated model to a model that is not aggregated, you, you, you have to align the, the forwarding sublayer for all the pieces that are in the aggregation piece. And so there are multiple places to do that in the current model. We were trying to reduce that and make it make it the um, as easy for the user to, 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 to specify this, but you, you still have the issue with the upper model, there is no pointer to the forwarding sub-layer. Um, so the, the aggregation uh, group reference relies on the service sub-layer forwarding uh, pointers to be aligned for everything in the group. And it's similar for the other model too. You have to ensure that your forwarding um, is aligned or not specified at the various level, so it picks it up from the from the aggregation piece. So that's the one area we still have to work on. And then we've got, um, <clears throat> as, as we'll go through the charts, we, we'll also see that there may be some some types of ag aggregation we've added that we don't need. We'd like because at, at a certain point, 
it's easier just to start another DebtNet service and aggregate things in. So we want to make sure that we're not overly complicating the model by adding aggregation types in we don't need. Uh, you go to the next slide, please. So this is the forwarding sublayer um, piece, and again, we've we've identified the, the the pieces in here. Now, this is one where I think we have perhaps a bit of uh, capability we don't need. Um, we were still discussing this in in the as we were going through the cases, but we have an aggregation at the forwarding layer that maybe is not not needed um, because forwarding the forwarding sublayer can can naturally ab aggregate uh, services because you can use that forwarding reference multiple times so I don't think we need as much um, aggregation capability at the forwarding layer here for for extra labels that we did at the service sub layer go on to the next chart please I was trying to find to be plus Q but since I would just recognize myself I'll just ask the clarifying okay. question um, when you say that um, it's not needed. It's not that the function isn't supported. It's, it's that you don't need any additional elements in the tree. It, right. So, correct? so at, at a forwarding sublayer, um, you you can at, at least in in the in the endpoint, you can have multiple services that aggregate into a forwarding sublayer. That's always been supported in the model because you could the you, we you can just do that because you're putting another label on with the um, with the forwarding layer, with the uh, service sub layer, you needed the aggregation label to to be added in there. But um, there there are a number of cases that that we'll go through, and it's possible that I've I've missed some case where that this functionality is also needed at the forwarding layer at at another place in in the diagram. I, I'm not a hundred percent sure that I've ruled out everything, so that's what we have to go through and. Does that help? I think I heard you answer yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, so what what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, go through um, some um, some cases here um, at an ingress net. So case one is multiple app flows are aggregated into a service sub layer. And next chart. So just just for some reference here, uh, Youngchell has done a whole bunch of diagrams that help clarify this as we've been going along and we've been using this. So this is just a, uh, a single DetNet flow showing the encapsulation as it goes through a network. This happens to be one that's using replication and elimination. Um, so you can see the various, uh, it's an IP packet that comes in, it gets its MPLS uh, labels, the, the service label and the forwarding sub -layer label and, and the, the pieces, uh, the, the labels uh, may change as they go along. Uh, the past and the uh, relative data plane functions along the various nodes. Um, so this is just a reference diagram. We're going to use this sort of um, pic picture and terminology through all of the, the, the cases that we follow up on. Go to the next one. So this is the case A1 where um, we're aggregating app flows into a service sublayer, and um, the there's uh, in the in the various documents there's there's kind of two ways we can do this. So one way is um, we have two two applications, and we we just basically aggregate uh, uh, we we aggregate them basically. Into a single service sub layer, and um, again, just as we had before, it's 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 managed the data plane just as it was with the normal flow. So we've got aggregation in here; it's it's being aggregated at 
sort of transparently to the rest of the data plane inside the uh, um, the DetNet flow. Next chart. So this is the um, running through Yanglin, the instance data, the JSON output of this. So this just shows we're using um, the the data dash t data f json is basically saying take this data and apply it as the operational schema of the uh, the model that we've got. So we we have had to fill in some information about the interfaces. So we just use a a set of interfaces, and then on the um, right hand side we've got the application flow. We've got the name. Um, and some attributes about that application. And so we've got the two applications. Go on to the next one. These, these files, send, they tend to be fairly long, um, but they have all components that are kind of together. So we've set up some traffic profiles here. We just filled in some data. They're just representative traffic profiles of you know information that you would put in there. And it shows the... Um, the member applications, if they're if they're using the same profile, we've got app one and app app zero using the same traffic profile. And then on the uh, right side there, we've got the start of a, a service sublayer for this. So we've got the name of the service sublayer, if it's got protection, and then the various we, we've got the app flows. As you can see, the aggregation going in, and then we've got the MPLS labels that are on that service sublayer. Next chart. Oh, uh, did you go too far? Yeah. And then we've got the forwarding sublayer. Um, so this is just showing the outer label that would go on there. And so that's that's a typical um, configuration for that case of that first case of aggregation. Okay, next chart. So case B is uh, aggregation of multiple DetNet flows at an ingress node. So um, case B1 is multiple service sublayers of a DetNet flow are aggregated into a forwarding sublayer. And case B2 is multiple service sublayers are aggregated into a service sublayer using the aggregated uh, DetNet flow. Okay, so next chart. So I I believe um, for this one we've just got the picture that shows this. Uh, we do have some data for the the next one with the aggregation label because that was one of the pieces that was new we were putting in. So in this one we're just showing that we've got two uh, two sources here. And we're showing the data plane representation. And because it, it, it's being uh, done at the um, aggregated at the um, forwarding label, uh, let's, get, let's go on one more chart and see if I, I think this is the, go on, next chart. B1. Yeah, this is the one I was looking. So this is uh, so this is case B1 where um, the the service is coming in, but it's being aggregated at the forwarding label. So we have multiple service sublayers using a single forwarding label that was supported from the model from the for a long time. So we could have this multiplexing of service sublayers into a forwarding label. And this just shows, again, the, the representative case of what the data plane would look like for that. OK, next chart. So B2 is the one where we've been uh, doing work about how to put the aggregation label in. And this is the one where I think the model has, at this point, uh, two ways to do this. And we're trying to resolve that as we go through. Um, so in this case, we need to apply at the service layer the aggregation label. 
um, which is shown here as the A label. And we, when you compare with the previous chart, the, the only difference is that we have this A label now, and we're, we're using that um, in, the, in the service sublayer as, as another form of aggregation that's supported and, and, and called out in the MPLS draft. And so we've been, we've been uh, augmenting the model to support that. So go on. So, so as I've mentioned, there's currently two ways to achieve the aggregation label. The first one does it all in the service sublayer branch and creates a service aggregation label. The second one has an aggregation label for grouping the service sublayers. Uh, we've just got to clean up the model and decide which way to do it. Um, so I've I've illustrated in the next few charts the instance data for both of them, so you can see the differences. So I'll I'll walk through that piece. Next chart. So this is the the instance data and. This is very similar to what we've seen before. So there's just the interfaces and the application. Next chart. And then we have the traffic profile, and then we have the service sublayer. So in here, in the service sublayer, um, we have the aggregation service sublayer located inside the service sublayer below there. Um, Next slide. The same thing goes for um, the the next service. So we have the next SSL two, and it again has a outgoing aggregation service sublayer, the ASL one. And then we have the ASL one. Um, Uh, definition and and its its various functions, showing the, the 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 services in there, and then the outgoing list for um, its uh, forwarding label and the forwarding sublayer. Next chart, and then we have the forwarding sublayer that goes along with that. Okay, next chart. So this one is the one where it's just organized a little differently, um, and um, we, we're just resolving this. We, we we were just getting to the point in the di discussions where we, we were seeing this. So this one has, again, interfaces and then the applications. The only reason the applications have a few more attributes in here than the previous model, but there's no real no 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 real difference at this layer. Next chart. Uh, traffic profile, um, same as before. Service aggregation group is a, is a is pulled out by it separately. So this one we have it out separately and. Um, we have the aggregation label and the services that it's, it's referring to. Next chart. Then we have the service services. So in this one, the, the services are basically the same, but they, they have a group function. They say that they're grouped, and then they're basically the same as they were in the individual case. Um, trying to keep that as, as consistent as, po as possible with the one before. Um, so we have two services, one on the left is SSL1 and SSL3 on the right. Next chart. And then we had the forwarding sublayer. So we're just trying to resolve which, which way is better, and it may be just that the six of one, half a dozen of another. I don't know if there's really any preference right now. We, we haven't discussed in the group which way to go yet, but if anybody has any input on that, we'd uh, appreciate any guidance on it. Next chart. Is that, was that somebody trying to say something? I was just going to ask, um, Howard, do you want to run this discussion? Are you, do you, are you going to, um, 
do you want discussion topic you know the discussion at the end do you want to go have take questions in the middle well uh, the, i mean it sounds like this is an opportunity for some working group feedback and yes, i mean yes. are you you know do you want to discuss it now or do you want people to hold their questions yeah so this this would be a good opportunity for people to to make comments on this to say whether they they're opinionated or um you know just choose one or or something like that um and and any feedback on our plan is to to incorporate some of this instance data into the document i i think it helps um uh the the, the drafts that i've worked on in the itf have have some of this instance data in and i think it adds clarity to the the overall um model um but any feedback on that too um so yeah, I open up the mic for some some people to to talk about this piece. Uh, you know, where, whether it's clear or, or not. I know it's a, a little bit of a rush because people just are seeing this maybe for the first time, but um, it, it would be a good opportunity to discuss it. So maybe just show the differences again. Just you know, flip back and forth. And, uh... Sure. So if you just want to go. Um, backwards. Um, really, it's just at the stop right here. Um, the service aggregation aggregation group is is pulled out of the service sublayer, and it's referring to it. Um, and the if you go down one, uh, forward one, yeah. The the uh, each service is referring to that group, and then we'll go up to the previous model. So keep going up. Whoop. OK, so down one. So in, in this one, we have um, the service sub layer. And it, it's, a, it's referring to the aggregation layers, so very similar to the last piece. Keep going. Uh, the, the other service, and the, it's referring to the service, to the, to the layer. But the aggregation is, is within the service sublayer, so it's within the same sort of tree structure. It's down below it. And um, it, it's, it's essentially, essentially the same, I think. Um, one is just inside the the service tree, and the other one is outside. Um, not not a big difference, in my opinion. The more I look at it, uh, I I uh, see Balaj has a question. Yeah, not a question, maybe a comment. Is that uh, I think if you look to the to the architecture document for .NET, there there we have defined the the service sublayer and the forwarding sublayer. So uh, aggregation is something uh, functional. Uh, aggregation is a functionality for the service sublayer. So having that component inside the service sublayer seems to be more natural for me. Uh, than than defining uh, a different uh, aggregation sublayer, which is not really there in the data plane documents and in the architecture documents. Okay. So I just added myself to the queue. Uh, I think we support um, uh, aggregation at both layers. I mean, look look at MPLS hierarchical MPLS is aggregation and forwarding layer. So. I think allowing for both of them makes a lot of sense. Uh, Don, you asked a couple of, um, I think, general questions. So I'm gonna give you my views on them. I think examples are really good. Um, so, you know, example instance data, I think is hugely helpful. I've often seen it as an appendix though, um, just to make sure to make it clear that it's non-normative. Uh, right. that's, a, that's a style point. I think having the data uh, is, Hugely helpful to implementation. So I, you know, if you're going through the trouble of, of generating examples, I think put them into the document and make them sure they're right is is really helpful. Um, the other thing is, I, you know, it, it, as much as you can do to reduce where the number of elements that you have to, the number of nodes that have to change in order to when configuration change, that's you know, that's always a good design principle. Right. Um, 
So, you know, if there's one model has uh, requires more to make a change or to instantiate a service versus the other, you know, from my standpoint, less is less is more. Um, uh, on that same theme, um, uh, it seems to me that you could model aggregation as just a um, in the outgoing list rather than introducing a whole new uh, service element. For example, um, in MPLS, where you need an extra label, uh, that could just be modeled as a new app flow. So you could have one uh, one service whose output is another service and thereby get an, an S label and then the A label. Um, one of the nice things there is, is for implementations that support it, you could do pre-off at either one of those levels um, based on, again, what the hardware supports. Um, uh, you know, I don't expect nested, but, uh, you know, who knows, maybe someone will be able to really piece fancy piece of hardware that doesn't. Right. Um, so, you know, I, did you guys think about just doing it without adding an extra aggregation component and just by, um, uh, uh basically chaining, um, uh, services or chaining, um, uh, forwarding sub layers uh, and I'll. It seems to work on the output case. I haven't thought through the input case, um, which may be more complex. So the when when you looked at the when you look at the um, the individual model with its um, uh, the service and the forwarding sublayer, and then you you try to do aggregation um, w within that, you you have you 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 then have. Um, some 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 change. I think the the second model, the one that we're looking at here, is trying to address that because it has the uh, the forwarding sublayer all in line. So I think I think it goes towards that model. Um, the the other model was was I, I authored that, and I was trying to keep the the service as much you know, whether it was aggregated or not aggregated the same um, to see to see if, uh, you know, it, it kept it any cleaner. Uh, looking at it this way, I think this one is probably as good and, and, and it keeps the three, the three levels in it. I didn't want to create another layer. Um, the, the, the other point is that um, when you're configuring this way, you don't have to specify. Um, uh, you don't have to specify it. It can completely down to. Um, how, how can I put this? Uh, th there's some. There's some things that once you've got the pointer to the aggregation group and stuff like that, you don't have to fill in all the other details. So, the if we can if we can simplify the configuration that way. Uh, by saying, well, you don't have an outgoing list, and and this one may do that. I, I'm I'm looking at it. Um, I think it it does achieve that. So I I think that this is the way to go with it, um, inside the the service sub layer, and we have this aggregate this aggregation uh, label. Um, I think your other question was, could we do this without even putting an aggregation, just having the the label specified um, because we we do have a label stack and we could just say um, the, there's there's the service sub layer labels and then there's the um, aggregation label as part of the label stack in 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 inside of there the the reason we didn't do that is that it was a lot harder to keep the consistency between the uh, the pieces if we didn't specify an, an aggregation piece. Um, yeah, I actually wasn't suggesting just burying it in the label stack. What I was suggesting is is that you set the uh, outgoing instead of to a forwarding sublayer, you put the outgoing to another service. Uh, to uh, well another, to another and, yeah. Another, yeah another service and that service is just an aggregation service, and you right. you, you can put the a label there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I think they're. Yeah, I'd have to think about that. Well, well, well we can we can. I, I don't think I can think on the fly that fast. Uh, all, all right, I'll take. We can take it to the list. Yeah. Um, maybe I'll join this next Monday meeting and and we can discuss yeah. it there. 
All right, thank you. We'll look at that. All right. So uh, go down a few ch charts. Yeah, I don't see any other questions, so I think we're on. Okay, so um, this one we just want to do a sanity check to see if um, that we've got the cases or we can eliminate any of these cases. So aggregation of multiple de debt net flows at a relay node. Now, this is one piece where we've sort of had a, a little bit of a discussion. Um, my view has been that um, oh, we, we have a relay function versus a relay node. So in, in, a, in a debt net node, you may have some parts of the data plane that are behaving as a relay, some parts that are behaving as a transit node, some parts that are be, uh, behaving as an endpoint, and you have those functions. Uh, however, a lot of the terminology here talks about a relay node, what you do at a relay node. I, I always read that as a relay function, but um, I, I don't know if there's guidance from the work group of which way we should do this. Um, we, I, I don't view it as a, a, a monolithic node, but perhaps I'm wrong on that. Is there any comment on that? I'm not sure what distinction you're making. I mean, a node, a node, a node certainly can, you know, any node can do multiple functions. It can terminate traffic. It can also right. you know, relay traffic. Um, um, are you asking? Is it okay for a node to do both? No, or I'm. Are you asking? I'm. I'm asking whether the term relay node seems to be implying that it is a monolithic node. I. I haven't been that precise on it, but I realized that we, we were talking about it that way. And I, and I would prefer a relay function, um, you know, cause, because it's behaving for this particular debt net uh, flow as a relay function in that node, as opposed to a, a you know, a relay node. But I, I'm willing to go with whatever the terminology is that the, the groups Besides, Shu Song is in queue. Yes, one comment about this question. Uh, I think uh, I prefer to remain the relay node rather than relay uh, function because I think inside the relay node, the, there could be a lot of functions. For example, we can uh, terminate a tunnel and also do the replication. So I think maybe. Um, Relay node is more precise to uh, indicate this case. Okay. All right. If everybody's fine with it, I. It does Does it have impact on the mo on the model at all? No. Um, no. I, I, you I, know, if it's terminology, we should just be consistent with the earlier documents. Whatever the earlier right. documents say, we should. Right. Yeah. So, anyways, um, so these are the cases that were 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 proposed for this. So we have multiple forwarding sublayers are aggregated into a forwarding sublayer. Um, multiple service sublayers of debt net flows are aggregated into a forwarding sublayer. Multiple service sublayers of debt net flows are aggregated into a service sublayer with a new aggregated debt net flow, and multiple forwarding sublayers of debt net flows regulated. Into a service sub layer, I'm trying to figure out what's the difference between three and four right now. Oh, m multiple forwarding sub layers, net net flows are aggregated a service sub layer of a new aggregated debt net flow. Yeah. So the question is, do, do we need all these functions? Um, this, like one, one option for C4 is that we just start a new DetNet service and then we say, well, it's, it's, it's a new service all over again. Do we need, do we need C, case C4? 
or the other flip side of that is is the model sufficiently flexible that it just comes out and that's supported anyways. Um, so I don't think we've quite gone through each one of these cases yet and, and determined that, but that's what we're looking at. Go to the next chart. How are we doing on time anyways? So. 35, 35 minutes. Okay. So, um, this is again just the individual debt net flow. So we've seen this chart before, just the terminology. Go on. So this is now showing. Um, oh, okay. So this is showing. It's a it's a slide build up. So we've got two individual debt net flows. Next chart. So now we've got these two two debt net flows in in case C1, and it's showing the uh, the pieces that are coming together. So this is just aggregation at the forwarding sub layer. And like we've said before, this is pr relatively simple to do in the model we've had. Go on. So this one, this one is now aggregating service sublayers into a. This is node one aggregating server, and two into a forwarding sublayer. Yeah, I'm trying to find out the difference between C1 and C2. So we have, okay, go, go back to C2. We have stacked F labels in C. Go, go, for, go back to C1. In, in in C1, we have stacked F labels. And in C2, we have a single forwarding label. So the question is, do we need this? Because we're aggregating. The other way to do this is to aggregate at the service sublayer. Maybe Young Chul has a has a point he wants to make on this. I mean, these just seem like two two use cases, right? I mean, you have to you're, you're trying to support both of these, right? Um, well, the the question is, do we need to support all of them? Are we you know, are we going overboard on the uh, on the thing? I mean, the data plane document support this supports yeah. this, right? So yeah. you're you're trying to support the data plane document. Yeah. So I mean, if you're just illustrating cases, Young Shao, is that what you were doing here? Just illustrating different use cases. Uh, this is C. Uh, this case is just possible case uh, based on. Uh, data plane document. Okay. So, so in other words, this is just based on the data plane. Okay. Uh, well, as you're speaking, just just maybe one comment. So that is the case where you are involving the F labels in identifying the flows. I think this is this is why you wanted to create the use case for that. Or am I wrong here? Because we, we have discussed about whether the nodes have a, a per node labor space or a per interface labor space. Uh, and in case of per uh, interface labor space, we said that the F labors can be involved to identify the .NET flows. 
Okay. Th this can also just be classic HLSPs. Right. Where that yes, that, the lower lab lowest label is just an HLSP. Okay, so C3 is the one that we've already gone through. Um, service sublayer with the aggregated layer. I, I'm not sure why this, oh, this is because it's at a relay node. So, so this is the, 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 the difference that I was trying to get at with the relay node. So we did it before the difference between the B case was that it was at the ingress node doing the A label. And now this is doing this at the relay node. And so case four, this is now um, aggregating the um, the F F labels. So in in the stack we have S labels, F labels, an A label, and then an F label. I'm not sure this case is in the data plane document. Yeah. I mean, I, I have to think about it because you're doing service aggregation underneath a flow. Yeah, I guess that could happen. I don't know. That, that's, that's sort of a interesting one. So MPLS is the service. I think that's covered actually. Balaj? Yeah, I also think that that is covered. Especially if you are involved in the F labels to identify the flows, then you need the F label above the A label in order to be able to identify the flow. Okay, thanks. All right. So this is case D, this is aggregation of multiple debt net flows to the transit node. So this is again, just a build up chart showing the, the flows that go through. So we've got flow one, I'm gonna go on the next chart. And then flow two. And then the next chart. So this is a transit node aggreg aggregating uh, forwarding sublayers into a forwarding sublayer. So at the transit node, we're putting a single F label on that's aggregating multiple debt net flows. I think this was the one that I, I questioned again, if we did, what, what's the difference between this and just saying that we have another debt net service in the middle of the network um, and everything's transparent to that debt net service as far as the that outer label goes? At what point do we say, you know, it's a separate service and we just start over again? Well, from a scaling standpoint, HLSPs 
allow, you know, the HLSP can be done sort of at the, at the node, or it actually can be done in between the nodes. Right. Um, so, you know, I think you want to model both those cases. Right. Is that what you're saying, asking? Yeah, well, I'm asking, you know, how, how deep do we go in the label stack before we stop? Is this sufficient? Uh, like, is this, is this the correct, is this the correct le level or are we going too far? Um, that was just we, we've been, you know, in general, we modify, we model hierarchy as, you know, it's only one layer of hierarchy and you can do nested hierarchy, but each, each layer of the hierarchy only understands sort of where you are and the one below or, you know, who's coming in and the way where you are. So plus one and minus one, it never goes beyond that. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. That's I mean, true. that's that, that's what we've always done in MPLS and GMPLS. Yeah. No, I think that's true here too. Um, yeah. yeah. Not suggesting that we're looking at all the labels. Um, so, the our 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 other piece to do then is to make sure that we can actually build instance data for this out of the current model. So, uh, Young Chell has done this, and we we just have to review it. So we we've got the instance data, and um, that that these all these cases he he's got instance data that that accompanies this. All right, so that's basically all the configuration options that we've got. Um, so with any feedback on these models would be appreciated or uh, considered. Um, we're just gonna go through and do terminology consistency. Um, we got some questions answered today that help, that's helpful. Um, there aren't any unnecessary cases, so uh, we have to add references to the model and then include in the appendix some Yanglint uh, sample configuration. So that's the plan. So we should be getting to the end of this, I, I would hope, um, in the next iteration. I would think that we'd be pretty close to getting going for last call. Any other comments? Is the plan to the continue meeting on Mondays? We, we didn't say no. <laughs> yes, I think I think that's been the implicit I implicit thing with the group of us. We've been we making progress. Um, and that's the that's the um, link that's been posted to the list. If anyone else wants to join, right? Right. Okay. Maybe we'll drop drop the link into the uh, minutes so others can join if they want. Or into the uh, ether pad. Yeah. So I think that's all we had for this. So are there uh, any other comments or questions? Okay, thank you. Um, uh, you know, obviously we're going to be meeting online for a while. Uh, just, I think everyone saw the announcement for uh, Prague this morning or today. Um, so uh, uh, we'll continue these um, both informal and formal meetings and uh, look to uh, the next couple, of, at least the next couple of IETFs online. Um, Janos, anything final? Dad. No, nothing uh, further thoughts, but uh, yes, I, I somehow we should uh, keep the momentum online uh, until we cannot meet um, in person again. Yeah, and thank you all for who, contributing to this work and, and keeping the momentum going. Really appreciate it.
Yes, indeed, indeed. Thank you very much for, for pushing this forward. Okay, and with that, uh, I think we're going to close the meeting. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye.